Boom, 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 boom. What's up, everybody? You're listening to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast with your boys, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. Check it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. What's up? How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Uh, pretty good. Yeah. We've been in this room with you for the last couple hours. It's weird. Yeah. We've been uh, just asking you for the first time now. How are you doing? Yeah, that's true. That's true. You just walked to my door and said, and I said, hi. And you said, no, shut up. Straight to business. <laughs> yeah, let's do this. <laughs> business mode on. Yeah. <laughs> no, we've actually game planned some pretty ninja stuff that we're really excited about mm. that you'll probably be hearing about fairly soon, but too soon to talk about it. Yeah. We'll just say it's in the podcast realm, though. Yep. Podcasting realm. That podcast is. Podcast hacking realm. What is that you say? Like, pod hacking kind of stuff oh that sounds a little better than podcast hacking i just thought you were gonna hack this podcast somehow i wonder if somebody owns podhacker.com hmm anyway right. we should, side we should, topic we, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll look into that later we should look it up later yeah for sure <laughs> okay so today we're talking to um my good buddy from from a long time now i, I like to say. think he's my good buddy too <laughs> well yeah <laughs> <laughs> you've just known him a lot longer now i've known him a very long time and have done a lot of business with him he's another san diego dude out here mr mike koenigs mm-hmm. so he oh my god I'm, I'm gonna let he has he gives you a great background of his story on here pretty much right from the top so he'll tell you who he is he has a very colorful background he's been all over the place with tech and well, video i think you and, learned a whole bunch of new stuff on this uh-huh. episode that you didn't even know about mike before we recorded it so totally oh, you yeah. have a, a, a history with him yeah so i did a my my quick history because i didn't really say it too much on the podcast was um i used to help mike with his product launches uh, video like all the the slide videos all the animated type videos and stuff like that and even mm-hmm. his uh shoot we we're even designing book covers for a lot of his book launches his mm-hmm. his product course covers all that stuff like so i was kind of that dude myself and in, in uh, my team yeah and then you and i when we actually used to be an agency back circa 2013 mm-hmm. 2012 somewhere around there um we built a website for him he was making some sort of like certification program when we uh-huh. built a website for him and then i we, forgot about that but yes and then we we built the website for his wife's charity just uh-huh. like my child that's right which uh mike was telling us is is very strong it's doing its mission and they're 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 amazing so we'll link that in the show notes too just like my child uh super cool yeah, yeah. and so so mike canings and and uh and his wife is vivian who runs just like my child uh in case you were wondering uh but mike yeah mike's a cool dude and he is freaking smart and he is the smartest tech guy like gadget tree and mm-hmm. like so we we dig through his whole freaking setup you know yeah on uh like when we recorded this actually we should probably preface this we were actually at his studio yeah <laughs> not in this studio we were his studio is decked out to the nines man yeah like, so at the at the at the end of this episode one of the last questions i asked him is can you walk us through your entire tech stack and i thought it was going to be like a three minute answer i think it goes on for about 20 minutes of him <laughs> talking about all these like cool tools and gadgets man. and yeah no it's amazing <laughs> um and there's actually going to be a video version i don't know if the video version is going to be ready by the time this audio version comes out but in the video version he's actually like showing all of the pieces in his studio mm. and, and walking you through what it is so really cool stuff there and um, go to just go to the show notes page we'll if the video is ready when it will be ready it'll live on that page yeah and we'll send another email when the video goes out to evergreenprofits.com yeah <laughs> so in this episode uh we talked about um where the the media is going we spent a lot of time talking about like past states of media current state of media and where we feel media is going and society as a whole and society as a whole yeah i mean we we kind of got on some topics that we don't <laughs> normally talk about on the show and some tangents some yeah. uh rap- rabbit holes and and a lot of perspectives were thrown around yeah which i mean hey I, let's be honest like i think this was it was very interesting and it's very it's a very real episode mm-hmm. i would say and it's one that should open a lot of folks eyes and maybe it's something that hasn't been spoken about so could much. be some controversial stuff in there we'll see what sure. you guys think that's okay but hey Push the line, man. Push gotta, the line. I gotta push the line. Can't it was a great episode. We had a lot fun. of fun, and Mike was like, he's a great conversationalist and had a lot to say. And uh, dude, we took dude's it ahead of the game too. Yeah, we took it in some good places. So I think you're really gonna enjoy uh, this one. Uh, this one. This Matt one. Talks like that all the time. Yeah. Um, so um, this is one of them episodes that we have some sponsorship love from. 
Hrefs. Hrefs. Why did you just shake a piece of paper in front of the microphone? Because this is a page page that we actually published in our newsletter. Oh, about Hrefs. About Hrefs. Nice. Last month. So yeah. I'm looking at the page. I don't know why, because I'm not going to read the page. Don't yeah. need to. Matt, tell them about Hrefs. <laughs> Hrefs is an awesome SEO tool. We use it in our business. We used it for a long time before they ever became a sponsor of this show. Data bomb. They the bomb. Uh, we use it to you know see where we're ranking for certain keywords. Uh, we see it to we we find keywords to rank for. We uh, find it to find opportunities for backlinks. I mean, right, there's, there's, tell, tell them about that that thing you were just doing a minute. Ago okay, about. so a few minutes ago, Joe was actually sitting next to me, and he's like, "What are you doing over there? Are you being a ninja or something?" And he didn't really say that. Exact I just, I like to pretend that he said that. Yeah. Are you being a ninja again? Um, uh-huh. <laughs> and a co- basically, a content ninja. So we like to promote affiliate products, as you've probably probably noticed if you followed us for a while and one of the ways we like to promote affiliate products is by using google ads and so what i do is any blog post i have that promotes an affiliate product i'll take the url of that blog post i'll throw it into hrefs and hrefs will tell me any keywords that that article is currently ranking for so it might be ranking for a product name review Mm. and i'll go oh cool i'm already ranking for this what would happen if i went and bought ads for it and was now the top placement on google so basically i was looking at keywords that are sort of low-hanging fruits that maybe i'm like ranking you know halfway down page one or even on page two or three for and i will just take those keywords by ad use ad dollars drive people to that site google's already seeing this as like a page that's relevant to the keyword because they're ranking me for it so now i'm just putting a little ad budget behind it and that's one of the strategies we use for hrefs to get affiliate sales so i bet that seven dollar trial over at hrefs right now for seven days can be made back with like one affiliate commission if you do something like this probably sweet so if you go to hrefs at that is www.ahrefs.com. You could sign up for a seven day trial for seven bones. Go get it. We use it. We're in there like every day. Yeah. Also, Oof. we have notes on this episode. Hell yeah, we do. We have it every single time. We have a note taker who's, we have a, we have like a team of note takers actually now. This thing has gotten that popular. Yeah. So, uh, what up, Sue? What up, Kate? And uh, whoever else is probably going to be on the team by the time this episode goes <laughs> We actually live. have one more note taker and I could tell Joe just drew a blank on his name so he didn't say it. Ron? What's the, the other guy's? Is it is Ron the third note taker? Yeah, he hasn't really started yet though. Okay. So, I was, sorry, Ron. I was, well, yeah if he ever hears this who knows <laughs> probably not so he takes our, notes on it he our, will <laughs> <laughs> that's true <Yeah>. hi ron <laughs> nice to meet you <laughs> um. so yes we have uh amazing note takers and we vet them out that is the truths and um we actually just steal them from places where we know they do really good notes and we're like yep you've been vetted cool <laughs> so we insert them and uh, into our podcast like system thing and basically i'm glad that's where you insert them joe <laughs> Jesus, you did, had to take it there, huh? I did. You Always. said it. All right. Always. Anyway, I said it. I just said <laughs> insert them. Jesus Christ. I'm sure there's a million other ways I can. Okay. All right. <laughs> and so they take notes and that gets published onto the web for your enjoyment. So Hustle you don't have to take the notes comp. right now or while you're driving. And please don't type that in if you are driving. Yeah. Don't. Hustle and flowchart.com slash comp. What was that last? This is the most rambly C-O-M-P. intro we've ever made, I think. <laughs> because of you. <laughs> you just added 80% of it. All right, let's get to the episode All right, with Mike Koenigs. Mike, welcome to the show. <laughs> in your my, house. It's my pleasure. Right, it's my pleasure. pleasure. All right. Yeah, yeah, thanks for coming yeah, so, to our studio today. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. It's nice to have me in my studio. Right, right on. <laughs> So what all are we right. going to talk about? We can go all over the place. I mean, right. I think, uh, well, we've been nerding out off off air a mm-hmm. lot about the tech, just all the gadgets you have, period, all the way to your rings, your glasses, oh, yeah. um, I mean, everything around here. And I think that's that's the coolest thing about you. You've always had this this inside look to all the tech and, and how to actually have it all work really well together. So that's always fascinated me because I've known you for, I don't know how many years now, seven, eight, maybe? Probably, yeah. Possibly. I think we started working together uh, a long time ago for sure yeah it was a long time ago doing all totally different things back then yeah but um so i appreciate you kind of guiding me a lot through those years which was really cool because i opened my eyes to a lot of these launches product launches back then working with teams you just have uh, had at that point i feel like the scale was just impressive and still and now that you have everything it's kind of you running a lot of it 
it's even more impressive. You know, that's mm-hmm. the cool thing. Just now seeing the behind the scenes of this place right here. So anyone uh, listening to the audio, go check out the video. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Show notes for sure. <laughs> it's gonna be the best video we've ever made for the podcast. Yeah, so well, far. we're uh, we're definitely um, uh, you know producing broadcast quality content, yeah. audio and video. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got an automated switcher. I'm actually switching live with my feet right now. (laughs) Um, so, uh, this is, you know, for anyone who's watching, this is our medium shot. Um, there's the two shot with you guys set up and then I'm on the, uh, on the main camera shot. I have one. All right. (laughs) But yeah. Um, and we're recording to multiple devices simultaneously. So we've got backups and backups. We've got multiple degrees of redundancy, Yeah, which is, um, to me, super, super important. And, uh, I don't trust any technology. That's (laughs) the God honest truth, you know? (laughs) So I'm used to everything breaking all the time. Yeah. How about all the data that your technology is keeping of you now with the ring and all that? We'll see where that data goes, huh? Yeah. Hopefully you well, here's <laughs> the thing. I- anyone who believes that there's any level of uh, privacy whatsoever is fooling themselves. So Correct. if you actually want privacy, well, you might as well never get online, don't have a phone, <laughs> um, use zero online services, mm-hmm. and uh, be a monk in uh, if you can actually find a place on the planet that has no people on it. Good luck to that. I was so. going to say, there's a place called Slab City out yeah. there by the salt and sea that's uh, i think folks are trying to do but it's it's a hippie joint which is totally cool but uh, <laughs> nothing, nothing wrong with hippies i love nothing wrong with hippies. i'm very we crunchy myself drones watching you or something <laughs> right yeah no. it's still in there <laughs> so let's uh for like the two people out there in marketing that don't know who you are uh, just a stereotypical question like mm-hmm. hey give us a little background of where you came from and uh and kind of what led you to this point i know now you're reinventing or you have done actually i think for a long time time uh who you are you sure. know, as a business person and all that yeah short version um born and raised in a very small town in minnesota mm-hmm. eagle lake minnesota uh always had an entrepreneurial bent instinct and it was driven mainly from uh i wasn't good at sports i wasn't good at school severe adhd all the usual markers mm-hmm. um but i didn't want to be poor and i was surrounded with a lot of poor people and i also felt like i was an alien uh where mm-hmm. i came from so um i was like i had a backpack in my uh closet from the time i was 13 years old and my it was packed all the time my vision was i was going to run away from home and go work for apple okay (laughs) okay and um i decided early on i started coding when i was about 14 years old and um thought i'd write video games for a living Uh, which eventually i did do um but i started consulting and helping business owners automate their businesses with databases and spreadsheets and word processors. And from there, they asked me to start solving other problems, which required me to program. Mm. So I started writing business software. And then <clears throat> I met a couple creative guys who had made feature films. And we started an agency called Digital Cafe. So uh-huh. at the time, it was one of the very first digital marketing agencies in the world. That was in 1989. Wow. And I was online at the time on CompuServe, Prodigy, America Online when it came out. Um, also, some of the early ones that no longer exist. Right. Um, or the, I, obviously, a lot of these don't exist. But one of them by Rupert Murdoch. Um, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Anyway, <clears throat> I started posting examples of the stuff we did, which were screensavers and games. And I got a call from Sony Uh and then a Sony from 20th Century Fox or a call from 20th Century Fox. And they said, can you make screensavers to promote our movies? That eventually turned into making websites for feature films. And we were one of the first companies to ever put digital video on a website back when it was really, 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 really hard. You had to capture a a frame of video at a time from a tape deck. Anyway. I had um, no clue. Like, as far as I'm known, I I didn't know that part of the story. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. So one thing led to another. And eventually, we got acquired by a big... uh, one, well, it was Minneapolis's largest advertising agency. It was mm-hmm. called Campbell Methune, which was also publicly traded. Okay. Um, so I learned about going through double due diligence and being acquired at a pretty early age. And from there, the dot-com thing was was going on. And I got uh, introduced to Dan Kennedy mm-hmm. and some early direct response marketing. Learn how to write copy. Wow. And I also figured out how to automate search engine marketing because uh, 
at the time, there were probably like 40 search engines. This is like everyone wanted to be Yahoo yep, back then. Yep. Google was brand new. It didn't even exist actually in the early days, but I figured out how to um, own any keyword on search engines in about 20 minutes by generating 50 or 100,000 web pages oh my God. In, in 10 minutes yeah. and yeah. automating getting them out there. That eventually turned into what became Traffic Geyser. So after, ah, selling, uh, okay. after selling that, I started creating information products. My first information product was called the Internet Infomercial Toolkit mm -hmm. because I was interested in getting people to do stuff. I was interested in influence and persuasion. I watched infomercials. Mm -hmm. I eventually met uh, Joe Sugarman, who yep. did the Blue Blocker sunglasses. Actually, these are actually Is Blue Blockers. Oh, are they? Really? Interestingly enough. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So... Yeah, so there, um, but what happened was next is th when I finished that product, YouTube came out two years later. So that was uh. in 2003. And I also produced another product called Everything You Should Know About Publishing, Publicity, Promotion, and Building a Platform with a woman named Ariel Ford, who mm -hmm. represented 11 New York Times best selling authors back when you had to sell a lot of books. Mm -hmm. Right. So I learned about publishing, books, marketing, direct response, search engine optimization, knew quite a bit about video, had a video game and a software background, and that turned into Traffic Geyser. And then I saw the motion towards mobile text, yep. and I thought, if I can automate that and set it up so someone could call a phone number and talk with voice, uh, with voice recognition, leave a message, or if I could automate two-way mobile text marketing. Right. And this is, again, the early days of mobile text when it was really hard. We had to write code to do all this stuff. It was yeah, now it's almost impossible. <laughs> yeah, you've got, you got a lot of tools like sure. Twilio, et cetera. Yep. But we had to write the code to do that. <clears throat> and we actually worked with a company that became Zapier oh, because we made okay. our stuff talk. And we actually gave them the idea for their business model. <laughs> so, Which God, I, I wish like hell now. <laughs> right? If I would have had a brain, I would have <laughs> said, give me some stock, baby. But, I mean, at the time, it just was like, all they did is offloaded the worst part of our business. So yeah. anyway, those two companies sold those to a publicly traded company and then um, started working on the You Everywhere Now business, mm. which was writing books and becoming a bestseller. We basically hacked Amazon. Okay. You yeah. know, it's like, how do you hack becoming famous was the idea. So it started of, you know, hacking marketing was uh -huh. digital cafe days and mm -hmm. we broke the marketing slash advertising world when right. it needed to be broken. Yep. Then we broke search engines Then we broke influence and persuasion and then publishing and then video marketing with traffic geyser and right. social media marketing. We automated that. Then we did the same thing with uh, uh, mobile text marketing and then celebrity, which was books, product creation, automating that, um, you know, how to become a consultant, coach, advisor. Um, we also, uh, I did media training. So that's when I built my big studios. Uh, okay. And, yeah. um, and I these sold studios that. were big. Yeah, we had, yeah. we had seven, seven sets. Like the little thing we're in now, uh -huh. imagine three systems like this. Got it. Okay. In one space. Wow. And, um, <clears throat> but what happened about two years ago is I realized I'd outgrown who I was, what I did, why I did it, and who I did it for. And I didn't want teams anymore. I didn't mm -hmm. want the grind of lots of employees. And frankly, I think what happened is as soon as a market gets saturated and it becomes Kardashianized, mm -hmm. meaning the fakes come in and um, it's overwhelmed and uh, it has too much noise and too many players and it becomes a race to the bottom. I get the hell out mm -hmm. and I run away from it as fast as possible. Can and you identify those? Like, do you know when that time kind of happens when the Kardashians come <laughs> into whatever medium? Yeah, for me, it's kind of a feeling mm -hmm. and I'm pretty good at predicting. I've been usually about three and a half years ahead of whatever the trends are. If you look back historically and I look back at my 20s to where uh -huh. I am now, because um, I've been doing this in some way, shape, or form for 30 years. Sure. Um, I, I realized I had to just take a step back. So having big iron in a studio mm -hmm. was a bad investment. Having a lot of employees... Um, having being dependent on social media marketing, which is expensive. There's no inventory, an absolute race to the bottom. Everyone's got a digital product now. Everyone has a funnel. If I hear about another funnel, I want to puke. You know, it's just like <laughs> there's nothing. There became 
I reached a point where it wasn't joyful. Mm -hmm. Too many events going on, whether they're online or physical. And, um, and you're either a big player and it's, or you can be really little. But in between, building like a five to say $15 million business is fairly difficult. Mm. And when you get into a larger space where you're moving tens of millions of dollars, you're, you've got to be innovating like crazy, reinvesting like crazy. And one thing I got tired of, frankly, was I had a lot at stake because I've always self-financed. I've never raised money wow. or had investors or depended on a bank. And to build an organic business, um, I thought, I'm going to take a break right now because the trends that I see and what interests me at the moment is I think the complete dematerialization of the planet, every institution that we're surrounded by now is basically obsolete. Mm -hmm. um, and that's like banking, education, medicine, um, retail, uh, communications as we knew it, advertising, marketing, um, and transportation. I was say travel I mean, just, and trip, yeah, yeah, look at uh -huh. look at just about anything. Um, and we're also moving towards AI, machine learning, augmented reality, virtual reality, Internet of Things, mm -hmm. integration of all this. You know, half of all jobs they're already obsolete and extinct. Mm -hmm. And if you're the ones doing those you're also on the chopping block. So I think it's a time to rethink society as a whole and rethink everything. Mm. And that's why I decided to liquidate everything. I sold everything, got rid of everything and everyone to simplify, take some time to think and have deep, intimate, meaningful relationships instead of broad and shallow. Mm -hmm. um, right. And like I said, nothing irritates me more than either being a lemming watching lemmings which eventually they all march to their deaths sure. <laughs> um or um any form of a race to the bottom got it yeah. so that's a that's a long-winded way of answering your question you know who am i but i thought shoot i'll just tell the story and yeah, see yeah. where it goes so i think it's amazing and it, it shows that you know the difference in in the way that you're approaching life and business and your thinking pattern even though it's the same it sounds like you're just identifying these moments in your life where and then you you pivot it seems like it's a lot of pivoting uh, but still to this day you know with the podcast of your own and uh, you know the platform that you have even though it's a very simplified platform we were talking about how you still want to leverage this content you want to be in the places where uh, you know engagement's the highest follow through mm -hmm. is great so the podcast is great for that and we can probably speak into the power of podcasting in your eyes too so totally you're, yep you're yeah. so you know mm -hmm. like you're like what's happening in three and a half years pal <laughs> Mike? <laughs> like with mm -hmm. podcasting um, so it's just interesting because it, it seems like the layers of your uh, your story have led up to this point and now it's almost like you're you're picking out the things that maybe matter the most that give you that big yeah. impact I think if if I were going to um, again part of this being able to even communicate what I just did, it took a little while to make sense out of all this. It wasn't like, oh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. It didn't make sense at the time. It was sure. just like, shoot, I just don't want to run out of money this month because <laughs> payrolls do. And holy crap, I just had a, I just took a $700,000 hit from some stupid thing that happened, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, and every entrepreneur goes through this where it's like, if I don't pivot, I'm screwed. Yeah. Um, and I've got everything I've earned for the past three years on the line. And four months from now, I could be flat broke, right? Mm. I mean, that was the, the grind. Yeah. But um, I think the, the, what interests me right now that is having these meaningful, deep conversations about integration and simplicity, which I've noticed more and more people are interested in that. Mm -hmm. So I call it, I've been calling what I'm doing right now I, um, the super being accelerator. So I've trademarked variations of super being. Mm -hmm. And the basic idea is I've noticed an increasing number of people who are a, um, they've been, they see the same grind and they're like, I don't want it any longer. This sucks. And this whole idea of scale and grow and get bigger, they've realized it, you wind up with miserable relationships, mm. poor health, um, constant anxiety and stress. And uh, my first business, Digital Cafe, cost me a wife mm. or a marriage. Mm. Um, my traffic guys are an instant customer, arguably just about cost me my life when mm. I had cancer. 
And my last business, I mean, I've been on the near breakage with my my wife at least three times that we know of, right? Where it's just the stress yeah. of being an entrepreneur. I was going to say, it's a very entrepreneurial thing. It, and they have sucks. to get it. And or maybe some, they're an entrepreneur themselves, which I know your wife is. Yeah. yeah. Or or to, to when your, your child says to you, Daddy, can you come play? And it'll be like, I can't because. And it's mm. like, that's crap. Mm. Who wants that, right? Mm-hmm. And so more and more I see people saying, I've got to find a way to simplify. Um, I see a lot of people going... I see this grind, I see this change, but I need help reinventing. It's like, show me, help me develop a vision and implement it. And the meaningful need to have a platform is is greater now than ever before because we are going to see a continued commoditization of human beings right. and just about everything. And the only thing that matters is the value of your personal brand. In other words, the value of your beingness, not your doingness or your knowingness. Mm. Knowledge has no value. Information certainly has none. Right. Um, and doing tasks, you can go down to your local um, Lowe's or whatever and get day laborers for dimes, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. Flesh don't matter <laughs> at all. You can buy any kind of flesh. Yeah. And if you're in the flesh business, you're screwed. Um, and so... And, and what industries or businesses do you think are top of mind? I know we named things like you know, transportation. It's, and we've talked about it. It seems like the cre- creative factor is the key, yeah. right? I, I think the, the answer through my lens is... Um, so here's what I know has value. Creativity and co-creation. I see them as two different things. Innovation um, and then leadership, true leadership. Let's just face it, the leadership on the planet right now, we have more bully dictators in power than ever before. Mm. And that is a representative of the lack of masculine energy, true masculine leadership. And I'm not talking about men or women. I'm talking about men who actually stand up and say, I am here to genuinely protect you and do the right thing. Mm. It just is non-existent. And part of that's because, I mean, if we get into it, it's we've had a lot of single moms raising boys for a long time, and men have been total pussies a for a point. long ass time. No, okay? you're right. Yeah, and I think that's reflective of of the world we live in today. Um, so I I think that that's uh, when I say leadership, it's both men and women. But mm-hmm. um, and again, it's not about men or women because you can have you know we need feminine leadership now, but we need integrated mm-hmm. leadership. Mm-hmm. And then finally. Um, we are on the brink, and right now, if you're paying attention to the news, there's all this stuff with deep fakes. Right. Mm-hmm. So we live in the time when you simply will not be able to tell what is real and what is not real in a very short period of time. That's right. I'm, um, I'm really worried about all these cameras right here because they're yeah, going right high res. angle, pick up a lot of every shit angle, baby, we got it covered <laughs> here. There's no doubt about it, right? <laughs> and so um, I. Uh, so I think like deep fakes and Voco, which is the Adobe technology mm. for um, sampled. Uh, processing a voice and being able to just do word processor with someone's voice and have it undetectable or at least it won't be detectable fast enough before someone's reputation is completely screwed correct um so we live in a time when we cannot trust our senses any longer the meaning of leadership trust and meaningful flesh-based relationships i.e experiences is higher now than ever before Mm -hmm. so all of my energy is being focused on developing communities that revolve around these values of reinvention and integrating these. Because I don't think AI and machine learning and uh, VR and AR are inherently good or bad. I think right now what's happened, like if you talk to any leader, like uh, you know the creators of Twitter or Facebook or Google, did they ever intend to do evil things? No. Right. What happened was their tools built so much momentum, and suddenly, due to the race to the bottom and the fact that stupid, ignorant people have a vote, mm-hmm. which I don't think stupid, ignorant people should have either a vote or guns. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Good Period. Point. Yes. Okay. You are a menace to society if you are stupid. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Stupid people shouldn't be allowed to vote. There's a ripple effect. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so um, that's what's happened is stupid people suddenly have the same level of a vote. And unfortunately, there's a lot more stupid people on the planet than smart leaders. It's perpetuated by 
the stupid people in the right media on, or right whatever on. it is. So what do, you, yeah. what do you think the world looks like for the people that may not be leaders? You know, you've got the, you've got a lot of humans on this planet, and only a small percentage of them are going to step into those leadership roles. So what do you think it looks like for the rest of us, <clears throat> Yeah, the rest of them? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> like, oh, man. Because we're not stupid. <laughs> not at all. We're not stupid at all. Right. Well, what I, what I do think, that is a damn good question. So the uh, illusion I choose to believe is true, mm -hmm. is that uh, I think uh, true leadership is going to have a comeuppance. I think this nonsensical race to stupidity, you know, part of, again, <laughs> if you look at um, now, I'm going to. I'm going to raise all kinds of red flags and maybe a little hate here, but like Dave Chappelle, for example, his latest comedy yep, we is, about this we is about nailing it. the absolute mass stupidity. And he basically opens up his fourth <laughs> uh, episode. Did you see his fourth uh, version? Just came out recently. Uh, yeah, I watched it. I watched it last night. I did watch it weeks ago or whatever, a week ago. Yeah. All right. So bas it, yeah. basically he opens up and he talks about some stuff and he goes, and you know what the problem is? You know who's doing this it's you <laughs> you stupid and then he goes on and of course he's been picking on the lgbtq wxyz culture mm -hmm. and again all i'll say about that he basically just said um 20 of the alphabet has been abducted <laughs> um <That's right>. and <laughs> and what what i mean by that is i think there is a um an insane level of power that's been granted to uh, a necessary change in society and awareness and consciousness. Unfortunately, dangerous trolls on the other side wield a lot of power mm. and um, out of context comments 15 years later are being reinterpreted based upon a new set of rules. Mm. Okay. And so that is evil. Mm -hmm. Just as evil as putting on uh, white uh, pointy hats mm -hmm. and and hanging people right. because of their their skin tone. All right, so uh, ignorance and stupidity take a lot of forms. It's my belief and illusion that what was going to happen is we were going to have a chance for the pendulum to swing back, um, and great opportunity for a next great generation to appear like my son is 17 i'm i'm impressed with the level of consciousness mm. i'm scared because of the level of stupidity and dependence upon you know you got a whole class of people who can't move a mile without their phones okay right gps and smartphones are another mechanism for being stupid Just being right? blind to the world and yeah. yes yeah. okay yeah and so i think what we've got an opportunity for is a new form of education, a new form of banking, a new form of mon money, a new form of transportation, a new form of um, jobs. I have an immense amount of faith in humanity dis despite the fact that it breeds too fast and in general, it's an infestation, an unconscious infestation left to its own devices. And I do think that there are good models for um what you know there's a lot of smart wealthy idealists mm -hmm. who believe the same way and have these same values who are uh reaching new levels of power and so i don't know if that answers your question but i do mm -hmm. have a lot of hope and i do think that there's you know i do believe that in general the world is a safer place now than it's ever been mm -hmm. Ever, I yeah. Mean, statistically, okay. it's been shown. Right? It's, yeah. it's a yeah. fact. Yeah. It is a fact. Okay, we can prove that with mm -hmm. with hard data, and there's a bunch of books written on it, mm -hmm. and and all the tools to solve humanity's greatest challenges are here. Whether it's carbon, I just read something the other day. Don't know if it's true. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, there they've there's this group that's figured out a way to pull carbon out of the atmosphere and use it for fuel. I have heard mm -hmm. something about that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And putting it back into the earth or whatever you got it. Right on. Mm -hmm. And and I also think that if we get a little woo-woo for a second, uh, I just saw, I think it was Johns Hopkins. It was a major college just opened up a $17 million um, center. It's a medical center that is doing psilocybin research, uh -huh. basically plant medicine. Yep. yep. And... Um, you know, I just came back from Burning Man, for example. Did you? Nice. Um, and, and I'm, I believe for under medical supervision and proper care, the hard data is in. Um, 
a lot of big mental challenges can be solved with plant medicine. Mm -hmm. And if you follow centuries, probably millennia of data that we are now learning about what ha has happened in uh, the Amazon with ayahuasca and other mm -hmm. sacred plants, that <clears throat> what we are doing now is permeating the membrane between the physical realm, the digital realm, and now the spiritual realm. Right. And, uh, and in doing so, I think humanity is feeling a m form of mass fear and anxiety that we're all experiencing. And we are about to bridge and toggle and oscillate between the spiritual, the energetic, the physical worlds, and as we move towards the singularity mm -hmm. of the digital realm, let's call it a kind of like a sacred triangle. Sure. Um, humanity has no choice but to evolve into a new being. That's why I call the super being. Uh, I think it's from okay. human being to super being. Mm -hmm. Now, with that, um, the low frequency fear based orc energies amongst us <laughs> on this planet. Yeah. Um, are terror terrorized because they're going to grip onto their obsolete extinct belief systems and uh and the things they held true in dear including old obsolete religions mm. i happen to believe that fundamentalist islam is a a operating system that has no business being and existing in a civilized society mm. mm -hmm. not ha giving women rights mm is is absurd okay and to treat people and to cut off heads and to adhere to that and to have an us versus them now i happen to believe that all fundamentalist religions are low frequency operating systems that probably helped humanity survive for a period of time don't wipe your hand a poopy hand and eat with it okay <laughs> keep it off the table That's logic. that makes sense okay <laughs> yeah. Don't eat pig if you don't uh, refrigerate it. Sure. That kind of thing, okay? Yeah, yeah. But now we've got refrigerators. <laughs> now we've got toilet paper and running water. And if you don't have it, well, then maybe we'll let Darwin take over. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't... Yeah, there's I don't, tools out there to use. Precisely, yeah. precisely. And again, I'm being harsh to illustrate a point. Right. But I do think that in a high-frequency environment, our old frequency operating systems do not serve a purpose any longer right and so um my next invention reinvention is committed to exploring that and finding uh peaceful ways that bring a, a high degree of prosperity and wealth to people who choose to evolve in a peaceful meaningful educated mm. way and live within this new um uh higher frequency yeah form of what's raising your frequency and precisely uh, it's interesting because on the podcast we had mike dillard on the show a month ago or so but it came Love live mike, yeah he's an awesome guy it was yeah. the first time we actually chatted together with him if you haven't watched and, his new video he just released a video like what last week last okay. Monday, really good he had a, a brain injury he was suffering from all sorts of uh, mental issues and you know things happening. i talked to him a number of times while he was going through it yeah. so yeah. i'm, I'm and, well aware yeah. Uh, yeah plant medicines and psychedelics are what he claims as the sort of thing that got him over it so mm -hmm. i mean we're yeah. big proponents of that as well definitely mm -hmm. and yeah he said that on the show and and it was amazing because we're hearing this more and more folks talk about uh, anxiety stresses suicide in entrepreneurs specifically of course it's in any high stress type thing but yeah. Everybody feels like they're in a bubble or they can't talk. They can't, they don't have a community around them, which yeah. is part of this whole, you know, this movement is more of a community. And, and, you know, all the devices we have, we thought brought us together, but there's no consciousness. Like, mm -hmm. like you're just like, eh, droning. All you yeah. have to do is walk through an airport. I rest my case. Okay. <laughs> and you've got a bunch of wood standing in your way, unconscious wood in your way. It's just like the, um let's see how do we say that it's a great word that is not allowed to be used right now and it rhymes with tardation okay <laughs> so uh yeah i hear you okay. yeah it's it, it's really cool to see the shifts because you see it in government like i just read some article uh with canada now talking about psilocybin um dispensaries and i think it's being led by the same guy that made cannabis legal in canada and mm -hmm. it was kind of a brute force effort because yeah. that was the only way to like get through these people's heads. Well, now they've got hard science mm -hmm. to support this, and um, and I know um, 
uh, it's Doblin who's behind maps.org uh-huh. who's also yep. mm-hmm. um, Tim Tim Ferriss is in yeah, there Tim's somewhere. Yeah, Tim's donated a lot of money. So, uh, and a very good friend of mine is really good friends with Paul Stamets, who's uh-huh. the mushroom yeah. guy slash uh, psilocybin. So again, the hard data, there's huge university hospitals now with data and also the FDA approved the use of ketamine, mm-hmm. um, right. which is a fascinating substance. I don't know much about that one. That's yeah, it's they, a, they talked <laughs> about it in the Mike Dillard thing too. But yeah. Yeah, I, I think what, what we're seeing too is we're slowly seeing the decriminalization state by state of psilocybin. So you're going to see all sorts of research start to come yeah. out. And I think right. it's really going to explode soon. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And what I'll tell you too is uh, in my experience... Uh, this is again gonna get a little woo woo. It's totally non scientific, but uh, it's become increasingly popular to use DMT, mm-hmm. the God particle, which there's mm-hmm. tons of data, a lot of research on that, a lot of science now. I can look at someone's eyes and I know if they've done the work. Mm. I can tell that um, they are actually where they are in their journey, their spiritual awakening. I like that. And, this. Uh, and I will just tell you, if you start paying attention, you can see it. It's kind of like Dune. You remember watching Dune? And <laughs> yeah, you saw yeah. those blue eyes uh-huh. <laughs> when they had the spice. Now they're accelerating their consciousness. But um, it's <laughs> quite interesting. And all I'll say is start paying attention to some of the people you talk to who you know are doing the deep work. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, you will notice uh, a different state of consciousness. And I think they they essentially vibrate oscillate at a different frequency just yeah. as when you meet a monk for example mm-hmm. who's been doing uh 30 or 40 years of deep meditation and work no you kidding. look in their eyes being in the room feel with them. different it's, it's so interesting that you say it so so joe and i i'll just say we've done some work in the past <clears throat> i don't um, know if you can tell or not uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> the test yeah. but we've we've had that conversation before of like you actually do start to recognize okay i can tell that person's mm. You know, it's, uh-huh. it's, it's very fascinating. And we, it's funny you said, like, uh, there's a way to notice. And we joked around, like, you should have, like, a tattoo or something. Like, what is it? Like, we're out on the beach one time. It was like, oh, seagull. It's See, free. the only problem with that is it's too easy. I know. And then, um, so I have a philosophy. Now, uh-huh. I apologize in advance if I offend any listeners or viewers. I believe that all tattoos share a common alphabet. And deep inside, when the aliens finally land on the planet, yeah. Whoever has a tattoo, it actually says "Eat me first. <laughs> okay, so um, so like, it's this basically was a stupid tattoo yeah. from eighteen years old. I, I dumb story. <laughs> oh yeah, I got a whole lot of tattoos. <laughs> I can see the it's one okay. on my ass. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sweet, you got you have your shamrock tattoo and the, it's right above, lips. It's no. your play, Playboy, uh, Playboy uh, shamrock. Um, but uh, go yeah, on, this I got is, it. I got like this. Anyway, I it's. It, this this conversation we're having right now, which uh, again comes down to men and women, um, specifically when I have the conversation with men about uh, masculinity, leadership, um, this the fact that, and I, again, I'm just going to call it what it is. I call it the mass pussification of Western society. <laughs> That's been your happening. Terms, by the way, <laughs> all right, it, it's it's been happening. Yeah, and you can see it around you, and yeah. and this is. Uh, and everyone knows what I'm talking about when I say it. And if you're oversensitive, chances are you're one of them. Yeah. Well, watch and, the Chappelle show and see how it makes you feel. Yeah, and then yeah. Chappelle stand up. Precisely, primer. precisely. Yeah. precisely. <laughs> if you're offended, there's a reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's sort of like, I'll even say something else a little more offensive. <laughs> Just to illustrate my point, if you're 50 years old and you've never been married before, mm. there's probably a reason, and it's probably you. <laughs> okay? Jim, you listening, right? <laughs> I like to call people out by name. Just like, like, we're watching you, Jim. But, but my point is, this conversation has been necessary for a long time. And right now, again, I'm not saying Me Too or any other movement that's been happening is bad. Mm-hmm. These are necessary for cleansing and washing and purification. Um, and before a mass extinction occurs... Mm. Some deep work has to happen. It's just what it is. And uh, it's a necessary extinction. I think um, low-frequency leaders who are elected officials that exist right now, I won't name names, Mm. are... We got exactly what we deserved. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is what happens when you behave like we've been behaving and everyone's scared and selfish and uh, and real strong people, mm-hmm. men or women, don't stand up 
for what is right. Right. And so this is a call to um, to evolve. And again, I believe if you are unwilling to do what is necessary and participate in the evolution, you will be part of the extinction. Mm. And and getting back to the specific conversations, um, men talking to men. I'm not talking about women being allowed and Boy Scouts, okay? I'm talking about <laughs> so there are some conversations that take place in a masculine or feminine environment. And I do understand that you might be born in the wrong shell and all that stuff. I'm not trying to say this to be insensitive. Mm -hmm. It's, um, but these conversations are necessary for an evolution to occur. And uh, the same is true about what it takes to be a, a gentleman in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, these conversations about what has real value. And staring at yourself through your selfie camera has no value. It has no value. And just because you got likes mm. means nothing. And unfortunately, we've got broken values. Mm. And this has been per uh, perpetuated due to the fact that it's just too easy to be lower than mediocre. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so I don't need to say anything else about this, but um, we can go on to really valuable yeah. technology things well, next. <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, there's sort of an overlap here that sort of related, but will change subjects here. But so um, speaking of the Chappelle show, I'm not sure if you actually heard what happened with the Chappelle show and like the media. So or the, not the Chappelle show, but the new Chappelle stand up. Ooh. So I guess um, all of the reviewers that reviewed it before it came out gave it like a zero rating. Rotten Tomatoes, they, they uh -huh. gave it a zero percent. That's because they're all a bunch of pussies <laughs> and they're scared and they're afraid that if they speak the truth, they will be slaughtered and lambasted by low frequency, low common denominators and the abducted alphabet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. What, what happened was they, they like Rotten Tomatoes gave it like a 0% and all these reviewing companies gave it a 0%. Mm -hmm. The media essentially gave it a 0%. When they asked viewers to go and rate it on Rotten Tomatoes, 99%. <laughs> so basically the media I've, was I've been inspired right now. <laughs> I'm going to go give it a review too. Yeah, yeah, and if I could give well. it a thousand points, I would. <laughs> yeah, but what the media was basically doing is they were trying to protect the viewers and say don't even bother watching it you're not going to like it you know and so media. this is where it kind of transitions a little bit is we can kind of talk about where media is going because now we're the media yeah you know and Correct. so i think i think that's sort of a good transitional point is where do you see media going now because mm. now we we have a voice the, the common man mm. has a voice that's not running a big media conglomerate great all right so i'll start by saying just imagine you had a tube and it was connected to your eyeball and the other end of the tube ran right up your butthole okay that's where the media is and where it's going right now yeah. now where should it go here's what i propose <clears throat> now what i'm about to say uh can get spun and turned into dangerous thinking and i happen to think that china right now does evil things Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the but, however, is they think through and they look at things with a thousand year plan in mind. Right. Okay. Which is survival and superiority. And that compared to quarterly thinking will win. It mm -hmm. is winning. Mm -hmm. It long did. A lot of people I know who started going to China 10 years ago said, you have no idea what's going out of there and going on over there. But what is happening here in the United States of America? We're screwed. It's basically, and I had a lot of friends coming back from there, and they invested a lot of time and in, in resources. And what happens over there, for example, because of uh, the fact that they monitor everything, mm -hmm. and you can be punished or imprisoned for basically 1984 style bad thinking. I can't remember what Orwellian times called it, but basically yeah. bad thoughts. Yeah. Okay, yeah, um, that's dangerous. Now, I'll tell you what I think should happen. First of all, imagine a blockchain that had your real identity embedded in it, right? <clears throat> and I'm going to make the assumption already, privacy doesn't exist, hasn't for a long time, and if you're stuck on that, well, you're just a big stupid lemming. You're blind. All right? Yep. Um, <clears throat> but if there's a blockchain, and let's pretend there's a way to make it secure, but the bottom line is... I would like to have a little switch and it's unless you post something and your identity is real. In other words, you've identified yourself and proven that you're a real person and all, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all these require 
And I'll basically say, I don't want to see anything that doesn't come from anyone real. I want my phone, okay? You can't call me unless there's a real identity here. In other mm -hmm. words, if you're a spammer, you're going to get billed. Mm. It's an automatic deduction to your bank account. Mm -hmm. And you can't talk to me unless there's money in that bank account. And if you're up to shenanigans and you call me, boom, I'll just say, I didn't ask for this. This person's a spammer. They get fined $5,000. Ooh, okay. okay. Yeah. Do evil crap. And that's what happens. And if you aren't a real person, now, you know, someone might argue, well, what would happen to, uh, you know, freedom of press and being able to anonymously, you know what? There's a place for anonymous communication. I don't have any problem with it. Can't be mixed. Hmm. And... If I decide and determine that you're one of the stupid ones, okay, a dangerous, stupid racist, mm -hmm. okay, I don't want to hear from you, right? Yeah. You can go over there. I have no interest in participating. So, mm -hmm. again, I'm using an extreme example to illustrate a point. Now, do I mean every single one of those and slice it down? No. That's not my, uh, my point isn't to create fascism here. Mm-hmm. We need a freedom of the press. I do believe in an an uh, anonymity. Mm -hmm. uh, I do believe that progress can happen. But at this point, when a dumb person who is dangerous is given a vote and can bully someone anonymously, now, first of all, it's up to you to turn that crap off. Mm -hmm. And so don't swim in a swimming pool filled with poop. You'll probably get sick and maybe die. Right. All right. However, I don't want someone who's poopy being able to jump in my pool if it's private property. Mm -hmm. I believe in private property. Mm -hmm. I happen to come from the point of view that if I have a small business, I should be able to hire and fire whenever I want to, whoever I want mm -hmm. to. It's private property. If I choose not to serve someone, it's my decision and my choice. Now, again, I can see that misconstrued and misinterpreted to say, oh, you privileged rich white guy. <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with that. I think what we've got are some dangerous precedents around us. And it is time to determine, you know, what is reasonable and what is unreasonable. Go to San Francisco and the city is infested with poop mm. and pee and drug users right. who technically can vote. Yep. All right? Yep. That's dangerous. It's dangerous people doing dangerous things who can affect a community. I think, again, there there is a certain point at which what behavior construes whether or not you lose certain privileges. Mm. There's a distinction between rights and privileges. A driver's license is a privilege, mm. not a right. Okay, if you are a proven abuser of alcohol, you should not be allowed to drive. And mm -hmm. I think what we've done is we've created some blurry lines. So that's um, getting back to the media and the news. Mm -hmm. I think there are some precedents and parallels here. And at the present time, uh, we have this very dangerous bully behavior and bully culture. Mm -hmm. And people don't see what it is. And unfortunately, we've got leadership in power right now mm -hmm. that can point finger and manipulate what that means in a dangerous way as well. Right. But bully behavior is bully behavior, and no one likes being bullied. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, what do, you, what do you think about, as far as the media goes, do you think... <laughs> The, the fact that anybody can start a podcast now, anybody can start a blog, anybody can start a YouTube channel. Are we giving platforms to people that probably shouldn't be able to have these platforms? I, I wouldn't go that far. So I don't believe in, uh, I really don't believe in censorship. Mm -hmm. I think we've got a pretty darn good system of self-censorship right now. You know, when we swear, we have to put the little E in our uh -huh. podcast in our episode. Um, I think that's smart. And if you go back to the, record album days mm -hmm. now there was a big, big hubbub but i remember when all that was going on the record companies decided to self-censor that's right now there was pressure going on um which was good it was a good lively intense conversation and that's great i love the fact that anyone can start it and the truth of the matter is is you're gonna get votes based upon your popularity in other words are you talented and interesting Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, the reason why, if we if we go down the path of Joe Rogan, for example, mm -hmm. why is Joe Rogan so darn popular? 
he brings interesting people together and he asks interesting questions. He's curious. But you have no idea where it's going to go either. He's completely transparent True. and any topic is not off limits. Yeah. yeah. He he is the right talent at the right time with the right medium. And I watched him go from, you know, 5 million to 5.5 to 5.9 to 6.2 million mm-hmm. followers just on his YouTube channel alone. Mm-hmm. By my estimates, he's making around 20 some million dollars. Mm-hmm. Now, what a lot of people might not know is he spent 30 years doing stand up. Mm-hmm. He's a great entertainer and he gets his ego out of the way and he knows how to push the his guests f- far enough al- along to keep them interesting and keep them yes. moving. Yeah. And he does have a great selection uh, and he knows his audience really well. And, you know, I've seen some, there's some great articles right now. N- doesn't mean they're good, but it, it, they're great, interesting articles talking about why is he so popular? Mm. And first of all, he, he definitely appeals to a certain bro culture. That's right. Uh, and is he'll flat out say, you know, it's shaved head bros who buy supplements and, and, and fight and, and yeah, yeah. And, and work out. <laughs> yeah. And I think he's bringing really interesting content to the world that needs to be heard. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people look at him and go, okay, let me get this straight. You have Mm -hmm. Kevin Hart or Schwarzenegger or whoever come in or Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. You drink with them. You smoke cigars or blunts and weed. You're getting high and you get to hang out with famous people. (laughs) And then you get to announce a fight. Yeah. And then you get to make... Where do I sign up for this, (laughs) right? Everyone is watching... Elon Musk on or Jordan Peterson who's like... Totally different from a fighter mentality type person. Oh, Infowars dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, Alex right. Alex Jones. That's right. That was a great uh-huh. interview. Uh-huh. And he got so, so much crap for that because everybody was saying, "Well, you're giving a guy a platform who shouldn't be allowed to have the platform." You know, yeah, Blizzard it's private stuff. property. It's his to give away however he wants. Right. So f him. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting. Because right up, <laughs> right up the old keys. Is what I say. <laughs> And what he was on, uh, I think it was just the other day on uh, on YouTube. I think they gave him like a day, and then they pulled him off again, like that fast. Oh, they pulled and, off uh, Alex again. Info yeah. Wars. Uh, no so that, kidding. I believe. It See, was, I think I think the media is really kind of shooting themselves in the foot by doing what they're doing because every time they go out there, censorship. It's dangerous well, censorship. Right. With, with the Chappelle thing, uh, like when I heard about the Chappelle thing getting zero uh, stars on Rotten Tomatoes, that made me instantly go. I gotta go see this now, right? So it had the exact opposite effect of what they wanted, right? The Alex Jones episode of, uh, of uh, Joe the Rogan. Joe Rogan yeah. show. Yeah. You know, when, when all the media starts going, why is he giving this guy a platform? Do you think that helped the listenership of Joe Rogan's show? Or do you think it made people go, they're right, I'm gonna it's, tune out of Joe Rogan. I'm pretty sure it's either that or the Elon Musk special that is the most popular episode, at least on mm-hmm. YouTube. I don't yes. know about downloads. And this whole thing that they made such a big deal out of Elon if anyone who's ever smoked weed ever knows, like I can't smoke stuff, it makes my brain. Mm-hmm. I go, I go to hell. Okay, okay. it's yeah. not good for me at all. It's different for everybody. It yeah. is. Uh-huh. But here's what I will tell you: He just said Elon didn't know what a blunt was, and he says, "Well, it's a mixture of marijuana and tobacco." Mm-hmm. Take it. and he all he did is picked it up and went, <laughs> "Yeah." Oh, okay. He didn't even take a real hit. No. He was not there's no feel. way you yeah. can get high. Yeah. He tasted. A cigar. Mm-hmm. That's what happened. Okay, yeah, yeah. it's like, and then what? His stock price dropped nine percent. He he lost, um, uh, whatever a big federal contract, and yeah. I would say he gained five million fans. Oh yes, mm-hmm. okay, overnight. So yeah. <laughs> let's you know. Yeah. Well, people idolize him now. They've got the big old blown up poster oh. of him taking a hit on the joint now. It's like the Obey <laughs> stickers or whatever. They're all yeah. getting art down. My suspicion is he sold a lot of cars that day. Okay. Tesla, <laughs> right. And at the end of the day, look at what's happening with space. And and here's the thing is yeah. Elon, a lot of people can pick on him. He doesn't pay for advertising. He doesn't pay for marketing. That guy is a genuine platform. He represents, love him or hate him, the next evolution of what I think society, wealthy uh, conscious people can bring and and Elon's flat out just like the Google guys. I mean the Google guys when they would hire someone and like I've been to Burning Man five times. Mm-hmm. I get this culture. They'd say come to Burning Man, drop acid with us, and we'll decide if we're gonna hire you. <laughs> That's basically what they what really went on there is Got they it. they're gonna decide what type of person you are based on that expansive environment. And you know, I would argue to the best of my knowledge, you know the most and look, I my brain does not like chemicals in general. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, 
but I, I, you know, I can publicly say that I've used a variety of them and it has been positive marijuana, not Mm -hmm. I had a bad experience when I was younger, Mm. but I don't. And I do think right now there is a societal conversation going on that makes it absolutely okay for anyone to do it. I think that's stupid and dangerous. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I believe that psychedelics for sure on the first time, First of all, you don't know what the hell you're getting. So right. it should be taken under doctor's supervision in an environment. It's about set and setting and the people around you. And if you are a crazy person, look, crazy, stupid people should not be given the ability to buy guns, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I happen to have been raised with guns. I shot them since I was five years old. I love guns. Mm-hmm. Taught my son sure. how to shoot them at an early age because I thought it was a valuable skill and important to understand and i didn't do it to make him an enthusiast i said these things are dangerous weapons and you need to know the difference between a video game gun and Mm. a real one completely different let's go to the range i brought some of his friends who you know one of his friends has two moms okay Mm -hmm. and and two other ones have no father okay Mm. and i thought and and they thanked me for it they said thank you for muscling up my kid and showing him this thing that I've wanted, but we couldn't do this. We didn't have the ability to communicate. Uh-huh. And so getting back to to drugs specifically in the wrong hands in the wrong environment, this is dangerous stuff. And you don't know what chemicals are out there. And you know, the Chinese importers, they don't give a crap about the God, people. No. Right. No. And neither do the Mexican cartels. They're not your friends, right. okay? They are not <laughs> supplying you with medical-grade chemicals right. that can actually transform your consciousness in your brain. Therapeutic. And, yeah, yeah. so mm. there you go. You're right. Yeah, it's a set and setting thing, uh, intention, the people around you. It's, yeah, it's it's nothing. It's not a recreational thing, and that's where it's, it's got to be watched, yeah. you know, when this whole thing come around, because it is. But you're right. It, mm-hmm. There's a whole different side of being that most people are just completely unaware of and and the shifts are happening but Mm -hmm. probably not too fast you know that's probably a good thing you know just so we can kind of work out the kinks a little bit here too yeah no this is we're but you know evolution happens drastically and dramatically Mm. you know in a meter let's assume that the uh you know there's a mass extinction you know and there was a meteor Mm -hmm. event right boom and let's say 99 percent of life was wiped out on the planet Okay, that's a theory. Right. Um, And here we are. Here's what I do know. Life and the nature of the universe is life is a virus, and the universe will fill every gap with life at any time. Unfortunately, if it isn't done intentionally, it's filled with vermin and weeds. In other words, think of it like this. If you think of... Um, Your consciousness is an infinite place to put stuff. Now, if you are intentional and disciplined and methodical, you can fill your brain with glorious thoughts Mm. and abundance and positivity. And if you eat like crap, you don't exercise, and you're a big fat turd, and you lay around Mm -hmm. on on a a sofa all day and do nothing about it, Mm -hmm. and you watch daytime television and, and, you know, whatever, 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 right? Um, weeds and vermin are going to infest your brain. And in the real world, I think of mosquitoes as low frequency vermin. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and the same with weeds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Life will allow every gap to be filled with that. And if you think of everything is everything, weeds and vermin are just like bad thoughts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Energy is energy and there are negative and positive energies. Mm -hmm. So just pay attention to what you're filling it with. So getting back to the drug thing, Right now, telling everyone it's okay to be high and and making it perfectly legal for anyone to be, just like that, I don't think stupid people and ignorant people should be allowed to, it's just, it's stupid, Mm, right? It's it's like everyone is all, we are all created equal, but if you don't behave appropriately, there's a distinction between a right and a privilege. That's all I'm saying. Mm Mm-hmm. And that goes for media as well. So us as podcasters, we, you know. Right on. Yeah. So hopefully the uncensorship stays for a while in podcast land. I think there is no choice at this point. There's no way to control this. Right. Um, right. And the best thing we can do is be leaders and reward people um, 
who behave properly and create great things. Now, again, mm -hmm. having open voting platforms like you have on Facebook and Instagram, I'm not saying those are bad. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I love the fact that Joe Rogan is suddenly popular. He's the right guy, right voice, right message, right time, right audience, mm -hmm. right medium, right mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, can that be recreated again? I, you know, who knows? There's going to be the next thing. There's a whole bunch of rappers and, and, and entertainers right now, I don't get it. I consider the majority of new music coming out to be vermin. Sure, it's just sure. filth compared to some great 70s and 80s performers. You look at Frank Zappa and the creativity that Grateful went on. Dead. and the, yeah. yeah, Pink Floyd. Yeah, Seriously. totally. No, we but, find ourselves going backwards now rather than going. Totally. But here we are. You know, it's like, what's the point of having that arg argument? Every, every generation yeah. wants what it wants, and it's going to uh, worship what it worships, and it's going to find meaning in, in something. And I think that is a good thing. Yeah. I think... Mm -hmm freedom intellectual freedom and physical freedom is critical for high vibrational evolution mm -hmm. it's huge and us as podcasters we're trying to fill people's heads with good stuff good stuff, Not <laughs> good the stuff. <laughs> no. No well, before we wrap up i do want to ask um can you walk us through your tech stack that you've got here more because i'm going to reference it later when we build out our yeah, studio but i think smart. our audience would be interested as well right on okay so um i'll start <clears throat> and I'll open this up so folks who are watching this can see it. Um, for audio, I'm using a Rodecaster Pro, which is like a mixer, uh, and we are recording audio to this thing. And that enables us to um, record, first of all, um, processed audio. So um, it's got Aphex processing built in, compressor limiter, um, uh, big bottom, and oral exciter. And I am recording it on a chip, dry, meaning it doesn't have effects. But the audio that's going to the box, which I'll explain in a moment, is wet. It's, mm -hmm. it's got effects. Mm -hmm. So we've got our three microphones. You're using an SM58, and I have two SM7Bs. Mm -hmm. I do that just because I do have three SM58, so I can actually do a larger group mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. here. <clears throat> they sound awesome. I've yeah. actually done side-by-side -side tests. I would say unless you're a great engineer... You can't even tell the difference between a four hundred dollar mic and a hundred dollar yep. SM fifty eight. And our we, show we is recorded on SM fifty eights. Yep. So great. <laughs> All right. Um, this computer I'm using, which isn't really doing anything other than giving us remote access, is an iMac Pro. I think it's Apple's best piece of hardware they've ever manufactured. Oh, wow, okay. This thing is so freaking fast; it's crazy. Now, <clears throat> all of this signal is being um, driven into a live stream HD five fifty, which is a uh, hardware box that allows me to record uh, switched video. So, uh, um, and by the way, I'm using a wireless foot pedal. It's a Bluetooth foot pedal <laughs> that allows part. me to switch live. So I'm switching to camera two. That's me right here. Camera three. That's you guys. I can also switch to a computer input. Um, and those are all hardwired in with uh, HDMI cables. Mm -hmm. And I am recording ISOs. So each channel is being recorded to a digital file right to um, hard drives, removable hard drives. Mm -hmm. Next, the cameras we have here are Panasonic Lumix GH5s mm -hmm. with some great uh, glass. I'm trying to think of the brand, um, but it's a very typical lens um, with continuous autofocus turned on. Ah, so okay. that's why it looks so good. They're perfectly matched. Mm -hmm. I did have Blackmagic Design Pocket um, 4k cameras in here mm -hmm. two reasons why i hate them one is the display is on the back and i couldn't see them because these things are pressed these are all against around. the walls they're yep. flipped around mm -hmm. next um they don't support continuous autofocus which is a non-starter giant pain in the ass to tune up cameras because i like to record with no one present mm. um and i also am backing these up so i've got two chips two 256ks in each one I press the record and I've got backup. So between the roadcaster having audio, all three cameras recording, I've got backups there. And then the live stream is recording. And <clears throat> because of how we do things here, I can actually give you guys the files. I'll give you the audio files, the video files in 4K. Mm -hmm. The live stream, this particular model only does HD, but I've been switching live. So... Um, you're actually going to get a switched product. You could put bumpers in the front and back sure. and go, boom, publish it awesome. tomorrow. Sweet. We could have been streaming this as well. 
Um, but I don't trust the hardware enough for that. There's some, some finicky stuff. Um, beyond that, <clears throat> I've got a light rig here, and you guys can see it, not everyone at, back home. But I've got pipes installed in my ceilings, um, standard LCD panels, and then I've got Bluetooth colored lights that um, are shining against the wall to give this thing some depth. You can see it here. Um, those are all programmable with my phone. Also, I have every single device on a uh, network, so I'm using Bluetooth slash Wi-Fi um, switches. Uh -huh. So I won't do it now because I'd mess things up, but I have Alexa that can talk to all of them. Of course, Alexa lights up. Yeah. And I actually tell it when to um, activate, because I'm not going to use the proper word, don't say <laughs> the, uh, the system. But I can actually, when I walk in here in the morning, I talk to the system. It How turns cool. itself oh, on, cool. <laughs> and then I've got an AC... I have a special air conditioning unit installed here where the blower ask. is in my uh, attic. Okay. There yeah. is zero noise. I can actually, I can get this thing down to the 40s. Oh, I was wow. going to say, it's, it's this is probably one of the cooler studios. I know like news, news stations are typically like freezing. Here's but the problem but though, is like the, their air quality is horrible yes. in most of them. Plus the ambient noise is terrible mm -hmm. um you'll notice here we do not have a echo or a noise problem right mm -hmm. no, you're good. um so i've got um curtains behind you guys and that um <clears throat> just simple theatrical curtains mm -hmm. and then um in front of my camera here uh, i've got an apple tv so i've got multiple apple tvs in here so the display behind me is run with an apple tv mm, okay. that one and i'm able to put up like keynote or uh, teleprompter that's controlled. I don't have it in front of me now, but normally I use uh, prompter pro software, which is voice recognition teleprompter. Oh, wow. And <laughs> so I can do a whole show if I needed to. And none of this wired. having to like, Oh, oh let's go Not backwards. At <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. And then of course we can see the screen right here. Um, this window is the uh, um, live stream software. It actually has a full web interface mm. and I can control the entire program, all the audio levels, switch by clicking, um, stream, record, output. And then uh, if we get even a little more nerdy, mm -hmm. <clears throat> all these files, as soon as we're done, automatically get copied to a Synology. I've got a 90 terabyte server. I actually have two of them. Mm. I'm so paranoid about data <laughs> that I've got, uh, you know, multiple replicas. Yeah. And then that data auto gets automatically uploaded to Dropbox. Mm. And then I use um, Apple's compressor, which uh, I've got a workflow set up. Like as soon as we're done, I can just drag the files and it'll make iPhone compatible videos, MP3s, and it also auto uploads them to Otter to be transcribed. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, uh, so this Didn't is... Didn't I say Mike's the ninja? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That is. So the, the bottom line is when I built this thing, I wanted something that I did not need an operator. Mm -hmm. I could do what a Joe Rogan does, have that quality of a program or better mm -hmm. uh, with no operator necessary, broadcast it, create redundant content, create a show and uh, put it in every format possible. And then I also take my episodes and I have a, an assistant who turns all of them into articles which get published on Entrepreneur and now on Forbes and on LinkedIn. So this is, you know, this is, this is my seventh studio I've built. Yeah. Um, and I spent months and months and months simulating every single component in my mind. And so um, this is all you. Right, like this is your architecture, you're testing, you're putting everything together. Yeah, I do have um, some former uh, uh, techs who work for me who did all the, the setting up, yeah. who are really talented. Hard, yeah. So I just, you know what? I don't enjoy plugging stuff in any longer. It's not fun to me. Yeah. Um, the one thing I will show you is this little gadget here, the Stream Deck. This is from Elgato. So um, what I love about this particular critter is... Um, it allows me to create programmable buttons. You can literally drag uh, an icon on this thing. It automatically shows up. So these are OLED buttons. And um, so you don't, and then I can program any kind of a button switch. So here I can switch between camera one, two, three, four. Um, just as before, I can start and stop the stream or the recording. I can push up a lower third. So there's um, that, and I can push it down. And um, it's got timers on it and also, can you know, it's 
you can stack macros. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So if we were live, for example, I could start pushing Twitter feeds. Oh um, my God. I mean, it's questions that might come in from folks. Totally. Like, wow. It takes a lot of thinking though. And here's what I've learned after in the past, I used to do like when I did the Mike Koenig show, that oh. was a very sophisticated program. It was amazing. Yeah. It had so many moving parts and I tried doing all this stuff live. You, you very rapidly reach a point of no return because you can't create great content that's highly interactive. That's good as a recording. Got it. It's okay. it's if it's not live, it's not enjoyable. And we live in a just in time, short attention span world now. Mm, mm-hmm. And I think I happen to think that the smartest thing you can do is create an audio podcast, um, video if you understand video and you're willing to put in the work, but it's five times more complicated. Mm-hmm. Just trying to teach an editor who's a good audio editor how to become a good video editor is a big gap. There's yeah. very few people who have that skill set in my experience who are consistent performers. Sure. And um and that that has been my goal, but it, it's and and also I think you know you look at again what Joe Rogan does, very unsophisticated uh-huh. production, okay? Uh-huh. And he's the guy that everyone talks about right now and everyone's trying to model. Mm-hmm. And there's only one Joe Rogan just like there was only one Tim Ferris. Mm-hmm. Tim did what Tim d- did and does what he does, which is completely different than Joe Rogan. Totally Rogan's. different yeah. uh-huh. model. But um yeah, so that I don't know if there's any other questions you have um about the workflow or the gadgetry. I know there's probably some other devices here. Yeah. Sure, and there's, there's a, couple, a lot more, but no need yeah. to. I think yeah. that's a pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, is, what are these panels that are on the wall? What are these called? Sure. Um, they're uh, they're just wall panels. I bought them from Amazon. It's a okay. hard plastic, mm-hmm. and they uh, they look obviously really good, and they capture light really really well. Yeah. Um, but um, they're probably like I don't know fifty bucks a box, so okay. you know a couple hundred bucks. I've been like. The clients I'm working with right now, and I do one-on-one stuff with them, um, I help them with their shows and get stuff figured out in their minds, you know, and mm. how they're going to. And I'm recommending just set something like this up because it looks so good. It's oh, yeah. cheap, fast, easy. Shine the light, light bounces yeah. off it really cool, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. It's the badass. Yep. Cool. That's awesome. All right, so capability amplifier. It's mm-hmm. been behind you the entire time. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's tell people about that. Your sure. Show with Dan Sullivan. Okay, so the the big idea, and by the way, sixty five inch TCL TV from Costco, five hundred bucks. Oh got a brand stuff, stupid, and cheap. It, with an <laughs> Apple TV connected to it, and it's got Roku built in. Oh yep. my god! I got so, this, like a same TV in my yeah. office, almost. Well, not that big, not that yeah. large. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much the same TV. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a it's. I mean, TVs are. I was gonna just do my entire wall <laughs> all screens, uh-huh. but um, at some blue point, light. exactly, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I'd have a suntan, you yeah. know, and like <laughs> blue half your all head. this <laughs> i do have a bunch of uh frequency dampening technology in here that supposedly sucks up the, uh-huh, uh-huh. the what are those called that's a uh, i some can't acronym. remember yeah. yeah and and whether or not they actually work i don't know it's a bunch of a little funky, pseudoscience-y still it is yeah. total su- pseudoscience or, yeah, it is yeah. yep. okay but i do have it on you'll see clips around here and i've got some big gadgets on our main power okay and by the way this whole home is I've been powering it 100% with solar for 10 years and charging my cars. I was just going to say, you're like, I mean, you've been a Tesla boy for since Yeah, day 10 one. years, 10 years, yes. I got one. Yep. <laughs> oh, good for you, good yeah. for you. They're awesome. Yeah. All right, so All right, capability show. amplifier. Um, this podcast I've been doing with Dan Sullivan from Strategic Coach, one of the most productive, smartest people I've ever known, 75 years old, still burns 1,000 calories before he has breakfast, wow. writes four books a year, and creates more content than anyone I know. Um, so we call it capability amplifier because our goal is to increase and upgrade your capabilities in an interview. My objective is to get like a cartridge style matrix upgrade for your brain. So you learn to think differently. Mm-hmm. It's not just a bunch of tactical step-by-step stuff. I want you to walk away and go, Oh my God, that guy thinks so differently than me. When we started the podcast, it was just Dan and me. Um, and we riffed. And now we started doing some interviews and I've been focused on uh, mainly Hollywood talent. So I interviewed uh, uh, Adam Conover from Adam Ruins Everything. Mm -hmm. I did Yannick, uh, uh, Yakov Smirnoff, the comedian from the 80s. Oh, He's been around for a long time, but you totally recognize him. I do know the name. I'm like, Uh yeah, (laughs) yeah, he's been in, he's in like, 
He's on The Simpsons and uh-huh. lots of cartoons. He still shows up. <laughs> Fascinating guy. Joel Zadak, who represents Tiffany Haddish, a lot of big comedians. And part of what I'm super fascinated by right now is charisma, how to get and keep attention, how to educate and entertain, and uh, keep an audience. Yeah. So I think one of the best ways is I'm talking to the masters. Heck yeah. And um, I just interviewed Gino Wickman today um, from Entrepreneur Operating System EOS. Mm-hmm. He's Traction not an entertainer, yeah. <clears throat> but I love the way he thinks. This guy truly lives by his own rules. Takes 155 days off a year. Wow. Um, and he's, you know, he's, he's done it all, but he's got a great life to show for it, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And that, that's how I look at things. Are you not just financially free? Is your health great? Does your wife actually love you? Do your kids know who the hell you are and vice versa? Are all those relationships in place? Because most gurus, their lives suck, even though they pretend otherwise. Mm-hmm. Most of them are liars. And I happen to know most of them. So, um, you get the inside look. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, the podcast comes out every single week. And uh, what I've learned is it's all I really need from a marketing perspective. And the last three clients I've enrolled um, came to me either through a referral or we met once. They listened. They all, all three of them said after they're, they enrolled with me, and these are multiple six figures mm-hmm. to work with me. Um, they said, I listened to four episodes of your podcast. I talked to you. And it was a 20 to 40 minute conversation. And then they signed up and a wire transfer occurred. Okay. So what I will say without beyond the shadow of a doubt, I think podcasts are single handedly, as long as it's the right audience, right message, the most powerful, effective way to build a deep, meaningful relationship with Mm -hmm. your target audience. And I don't even like using target it's kind of yucky yeah but um but you know what i mean not, not what or whatever yeah, you want to say totally yeah, there's sure. a better way of putting it yeah so yeah yeah, yeah. that's great Couldn't agree more yeah, yeah i love that you're studying all the charisma and what makes like likability and that kind of stuff because i've been going down that rabbit hole like really a lot lately there's actually a youtube channel called charisma on command, command or, or something command, like that yeah. i think i saw something like that yeah, yeah but i haven't watched any of them yet it's really interesting what they do on that channel is they actually they'll analyze celebrities they'll look at like a celebrity that's been on you know conan and all the different talk shows and then he'll break down what they're doing to make them likable and it's just just tons and tons of videos of them breaking down the personalities of big name celebrities it's really fascinating it's a great content marketing play too because there's a sales pitch at the end oh, yeah. every single there's a thing called charisma university that he's pitching <laughs> oh, at the end of every video great <laughs> idea we're not now, getting paid to say this <laughs> yeah. okay and have you seen i don't know what it's called it's two black guys watching bill burr no. I don't think so. Oh my <laughs> God. You've got to, um, all right. So <clears throat> as long as we're sharing some pod, uh, sure. YouTube things, it's basically two guys that are so high there. <laughs> you, you could, you could blind them with dental floss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I love it. And, um, they've now they're starting to get almost commercial because their, their channel took off so mm-hmm. much. And all it is, is two they at least if this, they aren't really I think they are really what they appear to be but uh-huh. they're definitely street African American guys <laughs> and Bill Burr who's married to an African American woman yeah, yeah. who does understand the culture despite the fact that he is a very, very white Catholic okay. <laughs> white mm-hmm. uh, Irishman yeah like a ginger uh, dude <laughs> yeah he, he totally is yeah, yeah. and he mm-hmm. is doing bits and these guys find the parts where clearly Bill is talking about culture. <laughs> And they they comment about it and they laugh about it. But just watching them mm. watch Bill Burr <laughs> makes you laugh. And the way they frame the show is, where are your two black friends? Yeah. yeah. And you can tell through the comments that the majority of the viewers are clearly white guys who do not have black friends. <laughs> it's okay. got to be white guys. It's, it's, it's so freaking funny. Oh and God. I heard about it through a friend of mine. Uh-huh. And he said, you got to watch this. And I actually shared it with... A very good friend of mine who's an extremely well-known African-American man Uh who just busted watching this thing because (laughs) he's in this interesting world because he lives in a white man's world Uh very much. And he grew up, uh, he had a hard background, upbringing, and all that kind of stuff. So he's kind of like, he oscillates. He knows how to live in all the world. That's good. So funny. (laughs) But uh, We're we're going to figure it out. We're going to put it in the show notes for sure. Good, good, good. good, good, Yeah. (laughs) So, um, yeah. So much good stuff out there. Right on. Awesome, Mike. It's been a pleasure.
thank you for having us <laughs> in your studio. Yeah. It's always weird to say that in our own show, but <laughs> it's thank my you. pleasure. It's been great. It's my man. pleasure. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening to this episode of the Hustle and Flowchart podcast. Before taking the time to listen, we want to give you something a little bit special. Every single episode that we do, we actually have somebody on our team take notes. We basically have a Cliff's Notes version of every episode where you can go and find all of the tips and tactics that they laid out, all of the resources that they laid out, all the good stuff from this episode. We actually have a nice, simple notes version that you can find on our website. So go to evergreenprofits.com. Find this episode that you just listened to and uh, give us your email address and we'll send you the notes.